Hi, this video is about what does it mean that Christians are light in the Lord? I'm Bake Adafi, and this is Bible study verse by verse. If you'd open your Bible to the book of Ephesians to chapter 5, we'll begin in just a moment. Now in Ephesians 5 verses 8 through 10, walk in the light, have the fruit of the Spirit, be pleasing unto God. For you were sometimes darkness, it says, verse 8, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Darkness is our pre-salvation condition. We are in darkness before we're saved. We don't understand God. God doesn't make sense to us. We don't seek after Him. We don't want to seek after Him. We want to go our own way. We're very pleased to go that way. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says, In whom, that is, the unbelievers, in whom the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the mind of them which believe not. So Satan blinds the minds of people who don't believe. Lest the light of the glory of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. How do you follow God? Well, you have to be saved. You have to have a, a, a new birth. You have to have the Holy Spirit grant you repentance and faith and life through the Lord Jesus Christ, through His death, burial, and resurrection, through faith in that. Otherwise, the God of this world has blinded your minds. That's a terrible condition to be in. We were sometimes in darkness. Everybody starts their life there. That's where we begin. You're born into the world, and you're born in darkness toward God. And until He shines the light into your life, you're going to stay there in the darkness. Romans 8, 7, it says, Because the carnal mind, that's the mind of someone who's not saved, that's a fleshly mind, a carnal mind, is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So to have enmity with God means you're at a warfare. You're at loggerheads. You don't agree with each other. You don't agree with the mind of God. That's what the carnal mind is like. It disagrees with God. It wants to go its own way. It doesn't want to have anyone tell it what to do. It's perfectly capable of charting its own course. And especially when God tries to intervene in its life. It's not subject to His law. It doesn't obey His laws. It obeys its own laws. It makes its own laws. <laughs> That's the essence of being an idolater. Making your own laws. We're a law unto ourselves. We make up who God is and who we're going to worship and how we're going to live. Not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can be. So that person who is unsaved cannot be subject to the law of God. That's what the darkness was like. You were sometimes in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. When Jesus comes into your life, he lights up every man who comes into the world. He comes into your life and He gives you life and He just turns the light bulb on in your brain and your mind. And that which was enmity against God before is desiring to know what He wants you to do and to please Him. How can I live for God? How can I be pleasing to Him? What would He have me to do? That's what I want to know. That's how I want to live. Light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. In other words, Christian... If you've trusted in Christ, live like it. Walk like it. Jesus in the light is the light. In Him we are light. Live in accordance with it. Walk in that light. John 1, 1 through 5 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The beginning of creation, the Word, that's the Lord Jesus. He was with God at the beginning of creation. He was with the Father and the Spirit and the Son. We're all together in the creation. The Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Uh, that's the Trinity. At the creation of the world is the Trinity. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. He is the instrument of creation. The Father uh, used the Son to create the world. He is the one who created everything. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. 
Where does life exist? It exists in God. Where does life come from? It only comes from God. Everything that is alive owes its existence to God. Nobody generated themselves. There wasn't any Big Bang. There wasn't any primordial ooze. There wasn't any chemical reactions. Everything came from God. It came out of His existence. He is life. And that life was the light of men, it says. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. But if you comprehend Him, you want to live like that. We were in sometimes in darkness, but we're not there anymore. We're in light now. We are in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light. John 1, 9 says, That was the true light which lights every man that comes into the world. Jesus lights up the world. He shows people their sin. His presence on the earth was the culmination of God's promise to send His Christ, His Anointed One, into the world. The King of the Jews, the, the last prophet, the great high priest, all those things are the Lord Jesus. He is the true light. And everybody that wants to come to God has to come through Him. Then John 8, 12, Then spoke Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Oh, well, how, what could be plainer than that? <laughs> Who can say this, by the way? What person ever says this? What person makes this claim? I'm the light of the whole world. Jesus does. I'm the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You want to have a, li a life that pleases God? You want to follow God? You want to be His dear child? You want to walk in love as He has loved us and given Himself for us? A sweet-smelling savor to God? You have to walk in the Lord Jesus. You have to trust Him. You have to be in Him. You have to commit yourself to Him. This is a daily walk. It's a daily taking up our cross and putting our sins to death, and trusting in the Lord Jesus and following after Him, knowing who He is, putting Him first in our lives, then spoke Jesus, I'm the light of the world. If you follow me, you're going to have a light of life and you will not walk in darkness. 1 John 1, verses 5 through 7 says, This then is the message which we've heard of him. Here's the message. I like the books that John wrote. They're so plain and so simple and so straightforward. This is the message. And declare unto you, we've heard it from him and we declare it to you, that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, that means you obey God. You don't do the things that He says not to do and you do the things He says to do. You're obedient to His commandments. If we don't do that, we're, we're lying. But if we do do it, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, with other believers who are, are living like that also. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. You want to have your sins cleansed? You want to have a relationship with God? You want to be able to follow God? Walk in the light. Walk in the Lord Jesus. Live like He commands you to live. Obey His word. Listen to what He has to say. He's the light that lights up the whole world. He's the true light. He lights every man that comes into the world. You won't walk in darkness if you walk in the Lord Jesus Christ and follow Him. Then it says in verse 9, The fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Christians are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. That's what happens to you when you become a Christian. He comes into your life. You become His temple. God comes and dwells with you. God Himself in the form of His Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, lives inside each believer. He inhabits us. And that inhabitation allows us to be obedient to Him. It allows us to understand Him. It allows our minds to be open and not at enmity with God. It allows the darkness to be dispelled and the light to come. He's sent by the Lord Jesus. Our bodies are the temple of God. John 16, 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, 
it is expedient for you that I go away. These are the words of the Lord Jesus. This is going to be the very best thing that can happen. I know you're going to be really sad when I die and I'm crucified and I'm raised from the dead and I ascend up in heaven, but it's going to be good because if I go not away, the Comforter will not come to you. The Comforter is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And the Holy Spirit comes and he came on the day of Pentecost in a big way, a mighty rushy wind, tongues of fire sitting on each one of the, each one of the disciples, and he brings with him spiritual gifts, and he brings with him spiritual fruit. He begins to change you from the inside out so that you look more and more like the Lord Jesus. This is our sanctification. This is God working in us to change us. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit, this is what you get when you get the Holy Spirit inside you when, when you're saved. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. All those things, he begins to work inside every believer. To one degree or another, depending upon how deep you were into sin, depending upon how resistant you are to his efforts to change you, but he's going to work those things in your life. And he has every circumstance about you under his control. He has your income, he has your health, he has your family, he has your job, he has all your friends. He has everything about you, where you live, everything. And he begins to work inside of you to produce these fruits as you uh, put your roots down into the Lord Jesus. And those fruits are produced into your life. Against such, there, such things there is no law. Galatians 5.22 goes on to say. Verse 8 says, walk as children of light. Verse 9 says, have the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is in goodness and righteousness and truth. This is what shows that you are in Christ. When you have these fruits in your life, that you are indeed walking in the light and a child of the light. The Holy Spirit is in you and He produces fruit, good works within you. So you can prove, verse 10, what is acceptable unto the Lord. So the proof here is you live it out. This is what your life is like in obedience to Jesus' commands, in obedience to the Holy Spirit within you, in love toward the Father, in love toward other people. You work it out. You prove it within your life. Test it. Live it. And see that, it's, see that it works. Do what's pleasing to God. See that He accepts you and that your prayers get answered and that, that He um, pours blessings into your life and He gives mercy to you and He gives His grace to you. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 23 says, His Lord said unto him, this is what you want to hear when you stand before God. The Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, the things of this life that God gives us to do. Uh, it's true that God has a plan for every believer. And He works it out in your life. He gives you spiritual gifts and He fits you into, the, into a church. And you're supposed to use those gifts for the benefit of others and for the benefit of the broader church worldwide. And He does this in your life. And He wants to commend you for being obedient to Him. You want to hear... Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. That is, in heaven we receive uh, the crowns of glory. We receive those things which we've done in our body, the obedient things that we've done for God. Prove what is acceptable to, acceptable to Him. You want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Thanks for watching. I hope the Lord saves you as you commit yourself in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have hundreds of Bible teaching videos on my YouTube channel. You can click the red circle icon below to go there and then click on playlist and select the videos you'd like to watch. If you have questions or comments about this lesson, you can email me at all one word, Bible study, v by v at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Bible study, verse by verse.